So we're on. This week, we've got with us Daniel from Boken Watches. Daniel, welcome, mate. How Thank are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. This is uh, this is big. This is really big. In what sense? Say more, mate. This, this is not something I've normally done. Like, I don't put myself in the public eye. I okay. kind of sit behind the brand. The so, grey man. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. wizard behind the curtain, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah, this this is this is fun. Mate, it's nice. It's nice It's nice to drag you from behind that curtain. Dra- <laughs> drag is probably a strong word. Kick, but, kicking and screaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kicking and screaming. But, mate, we, we stumble across each other at um, the British Watchmakers and Clockmakers yeah. event. And mm-hmm. I was highly jet energized. And I think we had some good banter yeah, on the day, absolutely. mate. Absolutely. Um, and I saw what you guys are up to, and 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 it, it really intrigued me. Nice. Um, and then as I started to scratch at the surface, and uh, I realised that we had some mutual friends, mm-hmm. and some of the guys I work closely with also, you know, are on onto what you guys are up to. Yep. Um, and and it, you know, it's led to this essentially. Mm-hmm. So thanks, mate, for making the journey. I absolutely. know it's a bit of a, a bit of a trek for you. Um, I am really really grateful. Um, but what we like to do with everyone, mate, is kind of go back to the beginning. So. Sure. You know, aside from the watch stuff, long before that, who are you? Where yep. did you grow up? What's uh-huh. your story, mate? Yeah, sure. So I'm, um, don't let the accent fool you. Okay. I'm a Brummy through and through. Wow. Uh, you, you definitely wouldn't be able to tell. And so spent the first kind of 18 years in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, bit of a footballer, bit of a taekwondo guy. Okay. Um, got to 18, 19. Yeah. Did the, the famous thing. Yeah, of course, I'll go to uni. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I took a gap year and went and trained as a ski instructor, uh, which well, is quite, quite the gap year, mate. <laughs> as, yeah. as you do, right? Yeah, you work yeah. for six months, go and train as a ski instructor, have a bit of fun out on the slopes. And I think that's where that kind of adventure spirit started, mm. right? Um, went from there to being on stages um, in summer seasons. Like I was that guy that was out there kind of doing the silly dances with the kids early in the night. And then as you go through the night doing that adult entertainment, playing Mr. Energy. some uh, raucous games, yeah, yeah, raucous yeah, games, yeah. getting getting kind of adults in trouble, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, came back and woke up one morning and just thought, yeah, I can't, I can't do this when I'm 40, can't do it when I'm 50. And so came back to the UK, found a telemarketing job and went from there. Yeah. Um, got into IT for kind of the last 15 years. It's taken me to Dubai for a bit, to Kenya for a bit. Um, took me to the US for a couple of years. Wow. And then now I'm back here in the UK and I, I guess I've just always had that entrepreneurial spirit because Boken is not the first company that I've kind of had. I've learned from mistakes. And yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. brought me to where I am now. Wow. So you've 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 been quite seasoned, mate, in in many aspects That's of life. One way of phrasing it, yeah. yeah. One way of phrasing mate, it. Uh, that I've always said, mate, it's not the age, it's the mileage, right? <laughs> and and yeah. and that works in both ways. Like mm-hmm. like my knees are shot. Do you know what I mean? Yep. At this point, and it's not the age, it's the mileage. Uh-huh. But the other side of it is, you, you know, how you round as a person, mm-hmm. the character element. It's not the age, it's the mileage. Yep. Um, and, and you've got quite a few miles on you, mate, which is. Which yeah, is, it's starting to show on the face as well, yeah, you know. <laughs> you've earned it at that point, yeah, as we all have. Definitely. Right? Um, but it's it, that helps your character and your person develop sure. and grow and, sure. and have different views on, on the world mm-hmm. and life and things yep. like that in, in positive ways. So the skiing element, where were you doing that? Was that? Yeah, so I was initially in Switzerland, in okay. Gestad, very, very nice it's area. meant to be from the beginning, mate. Oh, huh? there we go. Oh. Um, so was there... Then ended up out in New Zealand for a while. Wow. Um, as you do, jump on a plane, like, yep, I'm going in two days, mum. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then ended up in kind of France for a little bit for a couple of years. Okay. Um, out in Tien and Val d'Azur, just having Amazing. an absolute blast. Me, what a life to live. Yeah. Huh? yeah what yeah. a life to live. Definitely. That's... Um yeah, that's that's it makes me envious, mate, of, uh, of <laughs> your sure, 20s. I'm sure you've, you've I, had a bit I, of fun. I've got some yarns to spend, mate, yep. but but um, a lot of mine included uh, other people telling me what to do. Um, whereas yours, <laughs> I think you're a bit more free I, in your decision making. I think I told people where to go, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, exactly. Fair <laughs> one. Fair one. So so that brought you back to UK, mate. Obviously, you've done a bit with, with IT and tech mm-hmm. and... Uh, as you would probably describe it, more of a, uh, a mature job. Yeah, a bit of a grown-up job. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. A bit of a yeah. grown-up job. Yeah. And the thing is that all of these kind of grown-up jobs, as we yeah. say, they've all been really structured. Okay. So yeah. ev- everything fits within parameters of what you're doing, okay. and there's there's very little flexibility okay. to have that creative outlet. Yeah. And so I think that's where 
spinning up businesses. And that's where Boken's been born out of is right. that creative outlet to do something. So before we get into Boken, because yeah. that's, you know, an element of what we're here to talk about. So tell me about the name. Yeah. So the the name's an interesting one. Um, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm giggling because Boken quite literally translates from Japanese as adventure. Okay. Um, which, which is bizarre, right? Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. If you look at the brand, we're, we're a Japanese named, British designed, Swiss made watch business at the wow. moment. And it's really to represent that adventure mentality, that traveling around the world, that having fun. Yeah. Uh, and so I really wanted a name that sounded quite high end, yeah. um, but also embodied that spirit of what the business actually okay. is to the point that I was actually pinging my Japanese colleagues from the day job going, hey, does does this actually mean adventure? And I pinged someone in Sweden asking mm. if a Swedish name worked as well. And so, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun. I mean, uh, and, and something that we realised, well, I've realised, mate, and I think the listeners probably would have at this point as well on this podcast is there's so much variation and so much difference between brands. But one of the themes that, that carry pretty much across all of them is every brand kind of tells the story of the founder in, mm. in a certain way. Yeah. So for you, you've got that, you know, touching on various aspects of the world. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a link there to Switzerland, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, some of the skiing stuff Absolutely. happened in as well. Um, and, and obviously the adventure side of stuff, which is yeah. essentially, mate, and, until probably this point in your life is, is what you've been doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think... When designing this brand, one thing that I had in mind around the watches and the type of watches that we, we create is how can you have something that is office appropriate through the mm. week, but then if you're heading out going skiing or if you go and catch surf down on you know the South Coast somewhere, yeah. how can you transition that watch and make sure that it fits both sides? Both so that yeah. when you're just getting into the watch industry and you want yeah. your first proper watch, all of a sudden you've got something that can transcend both office and adventure. Yeah, 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 yeah. that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And and having the ability to do that, I think is fundamental because the vast majority of folks in this space were one watch people at one point. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, yep. and it, there's a particular piece that gave them the bug that brought mm -hmm. them into the folder, let them explore further things and understand yep. the scene as it were. Yeah. So w at what point did you decide like, right, okay, let's, let's start creating a brand. Let's come up with concepts, ideas. Like how far into this are you at this point? I think... Well, Boken only started in September 2023. Wow. So we're we're eight months old. We've had one watch come out. We're about to release a second one yeah, in yeah. June, I think June 11th. Yeah. Um, and we've already penned in our third watch for Amazing. November. So the, the way that this has taken shape is that state, step one was around how do we build a brand? Yes. And I don't just mean what do the watches look like? I also mean things such as what does the brand represent? Where mm. is this brand going to be in five years, 10 years? Um, and so we've started there. And then with the support that we've had from the community, because our first watch, I've been open with, with you and folks about it. Like we've started from an OEM mm. and we've created this brand around it. The second watch that we're about to release, which is the Odyssey, we've actually taken OEM and then customized on top. Right, okay. Um, to make it a lot more individual, it would be a lot more difficult to kind of copy that type of thing. Mm. And that's due to the support that we've had from everyone in the industry so far. Okay. And then our third watch, again, kind of leading down this path is how do we bring this back to the UK? Mm. So yes, we're Swiss made currently. Mm. Where we're going is um, in Berkshire, which is where I currently am based. Um, we found a company there where we're actually going to build and design with them directly. Amazing. So bringing all of that back home. Yeah, yeah. Again, kind of like you said about it embodies where the founders come from. Mm. I've gone on all that traveling route and I've come home to the UK. Yeah. And so we're doing the same thing with the brand. Wow. Hey, it's exciting. It, it is. It's exciting. It is. And, and and you mentioned that. I appreciate your transparency and, and how open you are about things as well. But I, I don't think that's anything to worry about either. Yeah. Like, like you, OEM, ODM, there is a difference mm -hmm. in those. Um, it's not something we, I'm going to get into explaining to the listeners. Mm -hmm. If you want to find out what that is, then, yeah. then jump on Google and figure that out. <laughs> um, they, they'll explain it far better than I will. <laughs> um, having said that, you look at a lot of the large, well-established legacy mm -hmm. watch companies um, that operate, mate, they kind of do that with yeah. movements yeah. and they have done for years. Exactly that. Um, what's the difference? 
it, it's exactly I mean? that. It, it's it's you know some people can get on a a, a bit of a a bit of a tangent with that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and listen, it, it, you've got to we've all got to start somewhere and you've got to yep. have your creative flair and you've got to understand the constraints of design and you know in which parameters you operate and work in um and then as you do more yep. you learn more and you make more and, and things ad adapt and change so how's how's the entry into the space been for you mate? how have you how have you what, what, what advice would you give yourself 18 months ago do you know what i mean um, I mean, eight, 18 months ago, this wasn't really even an itch to scratch. You know, I think mm. that the the thing that any business that I've gone into, working life, personal life, it, it's about how do you hustle hard mm. and how do you figure out the type of brand that you want to be? So for me, I think going back eight, nine, ten months when this all started, it, it was who are the people that I want to be associated with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And who do I want to be talking to on social platforms? And how do I want the tone of the brand to come out? Because I, I found that you can make very, very quick mistakes in that mm -hmm. sense where you wake up one morning, you, you may have had a drink the night before and you go, oh, it's, it's a Wednesday at 9 a.m. I need to post something. Yeah. I don't know why I'm drinking on a Tuesday, but no, there we go. <laughs> to each their own, right? <laughs> You're talking to the wrong guy, mate. <laughs> um, and so it, it's one of those where it's sometimes you get the tone of the brand wrong. Mm. And I think that for me going back, it's, it, and one thing that I've started doing much more is planning out three, six months ahead as mm. to what does that content calendar look like? What does the design process look like? And almost taking some of that structured work that I have mm. from the day job and bringing it into the creative space Absolutely. because then it keeps you on track and Absolutely. it makes sure that your voice is the same wherever you yeah. are. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that, mate. And you're doing, in my opinion, you're doing the right thing. Thank there. you. Um, uh, I've employed some of that. We, we're from somewhat similar backgrounds mm -hmm. professionally. Yep. Um, and and part of what I was doing was increasing or improving processes within mm -hmm. businesses. Um, I've used that knowledge in mm -hmm. my own business um, around a manufacturing technique. Sure. Um, and that's helped us leaps and bounds. It's allowed mm -hmm. us to scale. It's allowed us to, to, to really be proactive rather than reactive. Yep. And bringing that, knowledge from from your professional life into this mm -hmm. will help you massively yeah. massively help you this podcast is sponsored by zulu alpha straps.com zulu alpha straps make some of the best watch straps in the market and we do it all here in the uk by hand as a listener of the making time podcast you can enjoy 15 percent off on your next order by using the discount code making time 15 your support makes this podcast possible. So please head over to ZuluAlphaStraps.com so we can continue to bring you fresh content. Now, back to the show. So nine months ago, right, it's like, right, let's do the thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Had you had designs? Had you had you come up? Had you start penning stuff together yet? Well, where were you? Like <laughs> so I, I had started to design something. Yeah. I hadn't got a clue what it was. Yeah. Um, you asked me about the name. The name um, on, only actually came three weeks before we went into manufacture. That's how late in that design wow. process it was. I think the the main thing that we'd got is that I wanted the brand to be a community brand, a okay. community led brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, which, if I take a second just to get into that, it, it's it, ignore the design of the watch ignore the branding of everything. It was, who did I want to bring on this journey with me? Mm. So um, working with uh, a company called Black Chest, mm. um, they would design our boxes. Shout out Nacho. Oh, that yeah. guy, yeah. amazing, amazing. Yeah. You need to get him on this I at know, some mate. point. I know, we'll figure um, it out. So working with Black Chest was definitely something because it, it brings another element of that community. Yeah. Then working with um, a, a company for the second model, it was how do we bring a custom design strap? Uh, sorry. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> there's, there's other strap companies, I know. Yeah. Um, so we brought under the cuff along. Yeah. Um, even with our retailers, because we've gone into retail, which is something that not many micro brands and startup brands will actually do. Okay. Bringing our retailer along and bringing this kind of, all these companies together is something that I want to maintain because it's actually representative of how British watchmaking can go forward. Of course. In the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so 
slight tangent, but <laughs> no, no, by all means, mate. And, and again, we've touched on this on on uh, on the podcast before. But before before I, I, I wax lyrical on that, mm. shout out to uh, to under the cuff what we could be. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think something I've said numerous times, mate, on this is a high tide raises all boats, mm. uh, and I kind of believe that. Yep. And I think I think it would be a very very boring space yeah. if only one or two of us were doing well. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like yep. that's that's not where you want to be. Competition drives innovation. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's competition, then there's competition. But <laughs> yeah. but yeah, there's comp competition yep. drives innovation. It does massively, yep. um, and we all need that, and and that's what keeps us on our toes and keeps us aggressive. So you've gone down this path with the community led stuff mm -hmm. and brought other people into the fold mm -hmm. and, and and developed your own tribe, as it yes. were, yes. with your own design language and yep. and and pre-selected groups of individuals yep. who you've seen doing well mm -hmm. or identified that like these these are potentially or these are the people I yep. would like to be associated to mm -hmm. in, in this space. How has that gone? Is that is that a positive? Is that remarkably worked? well? Yeah. Remarkably well. Because we, we all share the same goal. Yeah. Which is how do we grow? Yeah. We, yeah. And, and grow authentically of course. as opposed to not not just inauthentic, but kind of not throwing money at everything. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, that yeah. Um, a, a lot of people go down things like paid media routes, and I appreciate that for yeah, sure. But yeah. for me, having user-generated content speaks yeah. volumes yeah, yeah. compared to other things. And so we touched on the, that business partnership side, but it's also about how do you work with the content creators online? Of course. Um, and how do you work with, I, I'm yet to coin what Boken followers, Bokenites, Boken, I, I don't know. But we we're there's two things that we're doing here. One is we work with people like Hans and Bezel, you've, mm. you've probably seen online or Watches and Booze, mm. phenomenal creators of content yeah. that we deliberately go out and work with, send them watches for a few weeks. They have a play, they mm. create videos to the point that they're some of the farest reaching mm. um, content pieces that we get. But on the flip side of that, we're, we at Boken are also creating this brings my tech background into this. We're creating something on the tech side where anyone who purchases a Boken has access to kind of this, I don't want to say a private members club, but I think you know where I'm going with this. And so there's three elements when the app eventually goes live, which will be, you can come and talk about watches, have yeah. fun, go wild. Um, one thing that will stick with me is the people that I've met on adventures and being out there. And so one thing that I want this app to do is to bring like-minded individuals together. Yeah. So if you're in Cornwall, like I said, at surfing, mm. you can pop on the app and go, hey, I'm a watch lover. I'm going surfing in Cornwall. Anyone around? And maybe yeah, you yeah, can yeah, start yeah. to foster yes. people that are like-minded to come together. Mm. And then the third element, which we'll get on to kind of the third and hopefully fourth, fifth, sixth watches, is we want our community to be involved with the design of watches. Mm. So if you are an owner and we're planning our third or fifth or seventh watch, we could go, hey, so these hands, do you like them? Do you not like them? What about this type of dial? What about this strap? How does it all fit together? Mm. And so I think it means that people and, and customers will be a lot more invested in the, the company as Boken. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, emotional investment is key. <laughs> yeah. um, and... Yeah, watches make no sense. Fundamentally, <laughs> we've got we've got phones in our pockets that yep. connect the satellites, and it's not going to get more accurate than that. Yep. So, what do we buy? We buy the story, we buy the people, yeah. we buy the tribe. Mm -hmm. That's that's how it works. Yeah. People become emotionally, uh, emotionally invested mm -hmm. in these things. The way you're going about it, mate, is is fascinating. Um, simply because I'm aware of a, a business in the US called Triple O Design. Mm -hmm. Um, fantastic company. Um, I think they're based in San Francisco. They've been here for a number of years. Sure. Solid, solid brand. Um, and they have something similar they've been okay. using for a number of years, mm -hmm. an app or a piece of technology that allows their end users to engage with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and they kind of reward people for in using yep. the app. Mm -hmm. So the more engagement you have on the on, on the platform, yep. then you get access to things earlier sure. or you get discount codes or whatever it may be. Um, and I think it's, it's really, really work well for them. Mm -hmm. um, it's fascinating to see someone bring that into the watch space. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's there's no better way of doing it than mm -hmm. developing this tribe and developing this community yeah. around you. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's that's your best feedback as well. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. generally speaking, mate, in in these environments, mm -hmm. you find groups of people, individuals that that somewhat stand out. Yep. Um, and then that becomes your 
you know, your initial R and D phase. Mm -hmm. You're in yeah. the guys, yeah, listen, yeah. you know, you're in the theoretically the circle of yeah. trust. Here. What do you think about this? Exactly. That. Can I send you one of these? Will you play with it? Yeah. Uh, send it back to me. Tell me what your thoughts yeah. are. Uh, and that's invaluable to any band. Mm -hmm. Absolutely yeah. invaluable. Um, and that's what what's going to allow you essentially, mate. To it's, it's like a cheat code. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. It it's um, we 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 all love getting things for free. Of course. Yeah. Um, the opinions of customers, the opinions of the kind of content creators, whether you've got a thousand followers or a hundred thousand yeah, yeah. followers, like all of it is invaluable. Of course. Because someone who perhaps has that lower following or is only just getting into watches may pick up on things that the established folks in the industry don't. Yeah, yeah. And so having that range is is just superb. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. So how far down the road are you with this this app, with this piece yeah. of tech? It's, I would say that we're probably, to, to coin a, a tech phrase, we're definitely in like the, the POC phase. Okay. Um, it, it's built, people can start to sign up, but you won't really see too much. Yeah, it, it's yeah. very much that testing phase. I would say that with the Odyssey launch, yeah. um, towards when we're fulfilling those, which I think will be about August, mm. that's when that first iteration of that app will, That'll be will go live. It's good timing as well. Oh, so it's just, guys get their watch and, exactly. and, and, and access this exactly platform. This, exactly this, exactly this. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. So on the design standpoint, then, mate, and the design phase of stuff, Naturally, this industry operates where we're working, you know, quite a bit ahead of ourselves. So you've got yep. stuff that is coming out in June. Mm -hmm. You've been working on that probably since you sold your first watch. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, you're lining up stuff for the for the run after yep. that. Mm -hmm. um, how far into this are, are you? Are you? Three pieces so far. I know there's probably an appetite and a little hidden locker in your brain somewhere that's got <laughs> some some other things you want to look at next year and the year so after. We we. Do I, I say we? Bokens a, a one man band. Other than we, we've brought on a designer who has designs for some kind of huge businesses. Mm. I, I won't get into them. Um, and so he's come on board. Little hint: he's come on board to help with the third one, which okay. will be a much um, a much smaller everyday wearer. Yeah, uh, it's it's funny. Earlier this week, um, he and I downloaded the the um, like Salita brochure, mm. and we're going through it. I think it's 180 pages, and yeah, we're, yeah. we're sat going through it, and we leave it for a couple of hours. We stop talking, and then I ping him. I think it's about 10 or 11 at night, just going, "What do you think of this movement?" Yeah, and he goes, "I was going to ping you the same thing. <laughs> that that might have to be the fourth, yeah. and I I think we're just on this kind of precipice of designing something fun, practical, adventurous, but it, it's going to be hot I, it, in my mind. I th I think we know where we're going with that one. Epic, mate. Yeah. Epic. It's, it's, mate, it's exciting. I, I love, I love having guys in <laughs> and, and hearing these stories, yeah. do you know what I mean? About yep. what's going on, what's coming up. It gives me like so much excitement, but, mm -hmm. um, hope is the wrong word. Let me, how do I phrase this? It, it lets me know that this space is healthy and well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. People are doing stuff. Yeah. Things are happening in the background. Mm -hmm. People are getting after it. The grind is going Yeah, on. for sure. It's fascinating. Uh, it's, it's exciting to see. So the fourth watch hmm. next year? <laughs> it it will have to be. Yeah, it will yeah, have to yeah, be yeah. because I, I don't think we'll be fulfilling the third until kind of November. In time for Christmas is of course, where we yeah, want yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think probably June, July because of the complexities, let's say. Yeah. Um, around the design for the fourth. And you know what? We, of course, Boken, we're not building a two-year brand. We're not building a five-year. Like, this is something that we want to take and build and grow and, like, just expand, first of all, in the UK, but yeah. absolutely, this is a long-term thing. It's not kind of a, oh, I like watches, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. Say, say more on that. I mean, what's what's the ultimate goal? What do you, Where do you want to be in 20 years? That's, uh, for, for me, I think... Getting Boken to a point where it's not just a nationally, but an internationally recognized brand. Hmm. But also, I want to keep it in the sweet spot that allows people to get into the industry, that allows people to go, I love watches. So yeah, to, okay. to, if, if I kind of backtrack, my love of watches probably started when I was 19 or 20, maybe 21. Yeah. Uh, before that, I'd, I'd worn things like a Pulsar and a Rotary, yeah, and that yeah, was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they they always say that kind of, what, what's the phrase? Like, out of tragedy is born, like, 
rebirth or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. my my grandma had gone on holiday. I, again, I think I must have been 19 or 20. She'd gone on holiday and regrettably um, her, her house ended up being burgled. Okay. Everything taken. Ugh. And she was in absolute bits about this. Yeah. And when she got back, it was like, oh, my, my jewellery, the inheritance that you might have and <laughs> might have if she's not spent it, but yeah, yeah. all of that type of thing. And so insurance claims and all of that good stuff, but she gave each of the grandkids a voucher for, I think it was like goldsmiths or something like that. Yeah. And that's when I went, oh, this, this is my opportunity at a young age to start looking into the watch industry. And so I took this this kind of small amount and bought a, I think it was a, a Dreyfus 1925, like half skeleton, handmade piece. Yeah, yeah. And it was under the £2,000 mark. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous piece. Yeah. And I think a little bit of that has stayed with me that goes, okay, well, you, you kind of have your, your base level brands, but then you've got this midpoint, particularly where the industry is pushing to be more expensive. Yeah. Tudor's prices go up. Rolex prices have gone yeah, up every yeah, yeah. year for, you know, indefinitely. Yeah. And it leaves this little gap between kind of 800 and 2,000 pound, which is where I want Boken to be mm. as a brand. Because like I say, it then gets you into the industry mm. and kind of captures you. And so that that's really where all this stems from. So it's, it's kind of like a, it's where you start getting into Swiss at that kind of mm. price point, isn't it, really? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. where you start entering into the Swiss space. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, that's been brands like Tissot or yep. Tag Heuer. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's, that's, again, fascinating to hear. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Like, like we, I, I talk to a lot of brands naturally, and, and, and a lot of people have got ambitions of grandeur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you seem to, uh, again, others have, have no idea where they're trying mm -hmm. to get to. Do yeah. you know what I mean? They're just on this journey and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we'll, yeah, yeah. We, we'll land with the, with the cards land. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you, you seem to have a predetermined set out mm -hmm. plan there and, and, and idea of, of where you want to be. Yeah. So how do you make that happen? <laughs> well, that's the secret sauce. I think right. if, if anyone's Without got showing that. too much leg, do you know what I mean? Like, showing how do you much. work that back? Like over the next... However it's, long that's going to take. It, part, part of it is is meticulous planning. Mm. Um, it, it's having that structure, but it's also being able to have that agility to to not let the small stuff sweat you. Mm. Um, that doesn't mean on the design front or that that doesn't mean on kind of making sure everything's perfect when it comes to materials or products that we use. But I, I think it's just that planning aspect and listening to what, the community says mm. because if if we put something out that is just absolute trash it's hard to recover from that mm. which again is why we bring the community on board with everything because that way at least it it helps us know that we're doing the right thing mm. absolutely yeah so a community-led engaging watch brand mm. that will bring people into the fold into really yeah you know that that sweet point of nicely made swiss mm -hmm. stuff um, it's an ambitious plan, mate. It's exciting, though. No? I don't think it's overly <laughs> ambitious, but I think you've got your work cut out, which is good. It's yeah, a good thing. I, I think it's 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 knowing the lane that you want to be in and knowing the type of brand that you want to be perceived as, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And, and yeah. so with that in mind, keeping things at around the right price point and yeah. everything, it just, it fits kind of also what I like to wear mm. outside of Boca, mm. right? Mm. So it's, yeah, it it. It's ambitious. It, it's but it helps, mate. It helps. It helps when you understand what where your pricing wants to be and where you want to operate as a yeah, brand, because for sure. that will then determine or dictate <laughs> your design constraints. For sure, you know what I mean. So for you sure. know, you, you could sit around and say, right, I want to, I want to make you know a, a twenty-four karat gold watch, <laughs> you know, under a thousand pounds. It's, it's just that's not possible. It's not going to happen. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's just not, not possible. And, and that's an a, 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 extreme example yeah. but you know you get you get the point where I'm coming at so, so you understand where you're going to operate it's a price you work that back then to you know where you're looking at you know each piece needs to be from a business mm -hmm. standpoint on yeah. cost of production and stuff mm -hmm. and then that helps you design what you need to design in that space and, and lets yeah. you know where your accessible avenues yeah, are yeah exactly it's, it's a very conservative approach to to the the watch industry i mm. think and and the other thing that we always want to be doing is bringing that element of fun to all of our watches mm. um 
the 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 Nomad when it came out was a little bit left field. That it's a titanium watch. It's kind of open case bag, three hundred meter diver, brilliant. The Odyssey that's coming out is, I mean, it, it's a bit wacky, right? It's a thousand meter diver, um, but. We've got a couple of things that are adding to this. One is that we've actually released a little character called Oddie the Shark, which you'll mm. find kind of hidden on the watch, so mm. to speak. Um, and and one thing that as a brand we've always gone, this is something we want to do is um, how do we make sure that we're giving back as well, right? Mm. We're all about oceans. We're all about kind of skiing. Everything revolves around this adventure side. And so when we kicked all of this off, we made this conscious decision that we're going to give back to a company called Just One Ocean. Okay. Um, just what? So a portion of every single uh, watch sold, a little kind of fraction of that will go to Just One Ocean, run by a fantastic guy called David Jones. We won't make jokes about Davy Jones's locker in that, but um, okay. it's it, they're a great um, charity because they they focus on. Um, educating the public rather than just changing policy, which, mm. you know, great thing to do. Of course, yeah. It's about how do you educate the public around things like the great big microplastic surveys. Uh, dealing with the root, not the cause. Exactly yeah, that, yeah, yeah. exactly that. And so I think that, that that's just phenomenal work that they're doing, and we're mm. just proud to be part of that as well. Where are they based, mate? Are they, are they UK? Uh, they're UK-based. Yeah, okay. yeah, they're UK-based. So, And what's their main main goal? What what are they trying to achieve? It's, it's purely around education to, okay. to the public in the – like I say, we can change policy and everything, but if you don't tackle that root cause in going, hey, do you know what? Throwing that straw away, yeah, it's going to yeah. take, you know, 100 years, 200 years to, to yeah, do yeah. anything. You're going to hurt a turtle and that kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, but yeah. It, it really is that. Yeah, yeah. Mate, I'm all for that. Right? I'm all for that. I, I love the sea. I'm of the there sea. Uh, I enjoy it. I, as I mentioned on this podcast a lot of times, mate, I fish, I fish sustainably. I yep. line catch stuff. You yep. know what I mean, I don't troll or other things like that. But I couldn't imagine having an ocean, mate, with nothing in it. Um, yep. That would be that would be no fun for all of us. There we um, go. So how, how how do you get the decision then, mate? In 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 because there's a. I suppose we're moving into my space now a little bit because I'm, I'm <laughs> outside of this. I'm I'm so engaged with 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 the ocean. Mm. So there's a number of different charities you got to pick there, and a yep. number of different people doing For sure. somewhat similar work, um, but coming about in different angles. And we mentioned earlier on the community piece, and mm. you've looked at the community, the watch community, and gone and try to find people who sit within your core values and your sets. I assume you've done the same thing with a charity element when you For were sure. picking the right one. Mm -hmm. What what was it that drove you or drew you to David Jones? Not David, <laughs> David Jones. Yeah, I, I I'm think trying really hard here, you, mate. You I are. can see it on your It's like you're <laughs> pinching really your hard. leg, I'm isn't like, it? I'm like, oh, don't, don't joke. Don't do don't it. Joke. Don't you won't mention no, pirates on the charity. Um, yeah. You know, there's monstrous charities out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get a lot of publicity, a lot of funding, and... Much like we're a small brand and people are taking a chance on us, we yeah. wanted to do that with a charity. Yeah. It, it's like a, a one-man band that then works with university students yeah. to go off and do these big research projects. They don't get a huge amount of funding. Mm. Um, they're, they're a very small British-based charity. Mm. And for us, I mean, much like we do with straps and cases, we want to bring people together along for that ride. And yeah. so... We, we could have gone to a big charity and gone, hey, we want to donate this, but they're taken up by the other big watch companies. Yeah. And so, yeah, we, we just thought, let's do something small and meaningful yeah. where if we sell 100 watches and we're donating £50 of each watch, like that money will go somewhere. Whereas to a bigger charity, it kind of sits in the back. It helps, yeah. but definitely yeah, not yeah, as yeah, much yeah, as yeah. when they're- It gets a, to its root. Exactly. Yeah, where it's exactly meant to be that. used. So, mate, what, there's a bunch of guys that you're a new brand, mm -hmm. right? Fresh, you know, up and coming. Um, there's a bunch of guys out there who already know um, about you. Mm -hmm. If you had the opportunity to to talk to people who have learned nothing about Woken yet, what would you tell them? What would you want to say? That's it's a question that <laughs> bounces around in my head a lot, mm. and I think it's really around probably three or four points. One is around that that bringing adventure and luxury together. Mm. Um, another one is being part of a community mm. and being able to kind of go, I'm helping build that brand. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Which, which a lot of brands just throw things out and go, cool. Okay. We, we want people to be a part of it. And I think having that element of support that you're not just supporting us, you're supporting everyone else that's involved with Boken, whether it's the charity, whether it's the, the other brands that we work with that mm. we're taking on that ride. Mate, I like perfect. 
like absolutely perfect. Like, guys, please come and check these out. Where can the people find you, mate? Uh, you can find us our website, www.boken.co.uk. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, it's just Boken Watches. Uh, and Amazing. That's, that's guys, it. please head over to the socials, check these guys out. They're doing exciting things. Um, and they go, people, that's, that's what it's about. And, and generally, it's nice. It's nice to be nice. Um, and, and these guys are good folks. So uh, until next time.